For a century, we've abused them in every conceivable way. And only now are we beginning a major program to try to restore their once great abundance. Hello, I'm David Suzuki, and this is The Nature of Things. The life cycle of these magnificent animals is incredibly complex. Do we know enough to be able to revive their depleted numbers? That's what we'll try to find out tonight. There's hardly enough water here to wet my feet. And yet a few years ago, this creek supported a run of chum salmon. They call this Mossum Creek, and it's located in a Vancouver suburb surrounded by houses and industry. There are thousands of creeks like this along the West Coast, and taken together, they can produce millions of salmon. But they're very easily hurt by logging and pollution. A few years ago, the chum in this creek became extinct, but efforts are underway now to try to bring the run back. The students are from Centennial High School in Coquitlam, B.C. They're placing an incubation box beside Mossum Creek. Later this fall, they will fill it with chum salmon eggs they hope to hatch over the winter. This is actually the second box the students have installed on Mossum Creek. The first went in five years ago, when the fisheries department was just beginning a program to involve the public in improving salmon runs. Now there are more than 150 such projects all over the province. over here if we can and get it swung around so that we get a full of water down over into that side. Brian Allen, an advisor from the fisheries department, helps the students clean up Mossum Creek to make it better for spawning. Okay, that's good. They've been rehabilitating the creek for some time, and this year there is a special urgency to their work. By the time we get finished on this, about half of the flow is going to be going down the Three and a half years ago, they released their first brood of chum fry. Later this fall, they hope that, just maybe, some of the adult chums will find their way home to spawn. Fortunately for the students on Mossum Creek, there was no need to send to Russia for chum salmon eggs. In late October, they collected 70,000 of them from surplus spawners in another stream. Now the eggs were laid down in the incubation box between layers of clean washed gravel. Hey, gravel. More than three months would pass before the young salmon emerged from the gravel. It would be a time of vigil for the students. Every day in rain or snow, someone would have to check the hoses that carry water to the box. It would mean chilling work to clear the intake screens, now submerged deep beneath the winter floodwaters. In late September, the students began watching for salmon at the mouth of Mossum Creek. More than three years had passed since the first chum fry had gone to sea. If any had survived and found their way home, they should appear soon, finning in the shallows near the creek. Weeks passed without a sign. The students kept walking the banks of the creek, watching and hoping. Finally, when failure seemed all but certain, 
There they were, the first pair of chum salmon home from the sea. Others came later, perhaps a dozen pairs in all. It wasn't a big return, but it was enough to restart the run. North Americans take the vast resources and spaces of this continent for granted. So we dump our raw wastes into the water, soil, and air, and extract animals, plants, and minerals as if the environment and everything in it are infinitely self-renewing. We've had ample warning that this isn't so, from the disappearance of passenger pigeons, bison, virgin stands of trees, to the many species that are now teetering on the edge of extinction. The story of the Pacific salmon has far-reaching implications for all of us.